Hello, my name is Lucas, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the molecular clock. The molecular clock is a concept used by paleontologists and evolutionary biologists to pinpoint the point of divergence between two different species and to generally estimate how old a species is. It's a very powerful tool, but it does have its limitations as we will explore. So, what is the molecular clock? The molecular clock relies on uh, the concept that given that certain species accumulate genetic change at a fairly consistent rate through time. So this affects directly their base pairs. Random mutation causes insertions, deletions, uh, substitutions, various different specific mutations. And these mutations accumulate over time. They're rare, but they do accumulate. And it changes the base code of DNA by a certain amount of percent over a certain amount of time. And if we can figure out how much it changes over time, we can pinpoint exactly when two different species diverged. Now, the thing is, this varies from species to species, so it, it can change depending on how long uh, it takes a species to reach sexual maturity, it can change based on the amount of offspring a species has, and it, there are several other environmental factors that it can change. It should be noted, though, that this is al altering the fundamental DNA and not necessarily the phenotype, like the end result animal, so it is somewhat re resistant to major evolutionary events. Now, the molecular clock needs to be calibrated. As I stated before, it varies from species to species, so it needs to be calibrated through fossils. Essentially, if we can find a fossil which represents a divergence point between two species and then accurately date that fossil, we know how long it took for these two species to become a certain percent difference in their DNA. If we can find that certain percent difference, which is fairly easy using bioinformatics and comparative DNA analysis, we can uh, divide that by two, and then stretch that out over the entire amount of years to determine the amount that each that each organism uh, changes over a set amount of time. We need to divide it by two because each organism changes, so we need to account for that factor. So this was successfully used in a study on songbirds. Um, it was based on a previous study that established the 2% rule. Essentially, birds develop at a rate of 1% every 1 million years. Why is it called the 2% rule? As I was saying earlier in this slide here, we need, to, we need to account for the fact that two different animals are diverging. So it, it was basically used to talk about the diversification of songbirds, and it was found that because their DNA is actually fairly similar, they diversified some 250,000 years ago, which is a fairly recent divergence. And that was a new information for, for the scientific community and a very useful uh, impact of the molecular clock. Now, the molecular clock does have several uh, limitations. The primary one being it's only an estimate. Not all species conform to uh, the projections of the molecular clock, and it do just doesn't always work 100% accurately. Um, the second is that it needs fossil evidence, and fossil evidence isn't always easy to find, and it's not also always easy to date, so it can easily be corrupted that way. And the third main lim and the third limitation, and probably the largest limitation, is that the extrapolation can only stretch so far. As I was saying, certain species, different species evolve at different rates. And, si and while similar species evolve at similar rates, the farther away you go from the original rate, the farther away you go phylogenetically from the original species that you counted, that you cal calculated the rate for, the less accurate the clock becomes. So thank you for watching my video. This has been a quick explanation of a very complex topic. And I hope you look more into it because this is fascinating and many consider it to be the future of paleontology. Thank you.